What's up, Commanders? Dimebot here. Welcome back to another Elite Dangerous Odyssey video. Now, I made a video oh, a couple of years ago about the basics of bounty hunting, and I did it in this ship. And the top comment that I get is, oh, bounty hunting basics in an anaconda, one of the late game ships. Real useful. The video is not about the ship. The video is about the methodology of bounty hunting. And the new version is still going to be about the methodology of bounty hunting. But, since you guys missed the entire point of the original video, let's do it in a Sidewinder instead. And I'll prove to you that it works either way. So, first thing we want to do once we load in is talk about ships. Because you need to know your role if you're going bounty hunting. You have ships that are shield tanks and you have ships that are hull tanks. Knowing which one you have is going to make sure that you survive. So let's take a look at the shipyard here and go through what they sell, because they sell quite a lot. Sidewinder, basic ship, very flimsy. The Eagle is your first all-up fighter ship. Then you have the Hauler. This is a straight cargo ship. Adder is a cargo ship. It can sort of take care of itself. You have the Imperial Eagle, which is an Imperial version of the Eagle. You have the Viper Mark III. This is a straight-up space superiority fighter. It is a fantastic, I wouldn't say first fighter ship, maybe a medium. Cobra Mark III, good at pretty much everything. The Viper Mark IV, this is an advanced version of the Mark III. It has a larger power plant. You have the Type Six Transporter. Do not fly one of these in combat. Dolphin, again, this is a passenger liner. Imperial carriers can sort of take care of themselves, but in this price range, the Vulture is a vastly superior option. Type 7 transporter, just no for combat. We have the Imperial Clipper. This is one of the bigger ships. It's decent for combat. You have the Beluga. And then these are the ships that are stocked here. The Scout, Diamondback Scout, I wouldn't take this into combat. Cobra Mark IV will be fine in combat. This is another exploration ship. The keelback can semi take care of itself in combat, but you really don't want to. The Asp Scout, just no. The Asp Explorer, yes, you can engage in combat with this ship. You'll be fine unless you get jumped by really high-end ships. Now, we come to some of the better combat ships if you don't want to splurge on a big three. The Fed Drop Ship, this is a hull tank. It is meant to take damage to the hull. Shields are going to go down quick. The Alliance Chieftain, again, this is a hull tank. You can equip uh, hull reinforcements to it to make it pretty beefy. Same with the Federal Assault Ship. The Alliance Crusader is a slightly modified version of the Chieftain. Then there is the Challenger. They really love modifying this ship. Federal Gunship, Crate Phantom, Crate Mark II. All of these will make decent fighters or combat ships. The Orca is a passenger ship. So probably don't want to take this into combat. Fred Alance, here we go. This is a lot of people's favorite combat ship. I don't like it. It is a personal preference. The Mamba, personally, I think this thing is a bit shit. It is fast and it can hit hard, but I just don't like it. Python, this is a fantastic combat ship. Type 9 Heavy and a Type 10 Defender. These, <laughs> uh, This is definitely not a cargo ship. Frontier told us this would be, but it's a lie. And here we have the Anaconda, the Federal Corvette, and the Imperial Cutter. These two right here, the Corvette and the Conda, these are your two top-tier high-end combat ships. And then the Cutter is fairly decent as well. But if you're really looking for the most bang for your buck, these two right here, yeah, that's going to be the be-all and all. But we're not doing it in those ships because people complained. So let's go to Outfitting and check out our sighty here. Oh, boy. Module Shop. So... Armor. You have a bunch of different types of armor. Uh, at first, you're going to want to just go with the normal armor because armor is expensive and it increases your rebuy. Then you want to pick modules for your hard points. I like to go with a mix of thermal and kinetic. Thermal for the shields, kinetic to tear up the hull. So that would be lasers and then cannons and auto cannons. So uh, let's look. You have to find, pardon me, guys. They've changed the uh, layout of the outfitting, and I have a hard time with it. So, on here, 
Let's see, we have a gimbaled class one pulse laser. There's fixed, which makes you aim yourself. Gimbaled, which will track for you, and turreted, which they're turrets, they do it themselves. A lot of people find it is easier to start with gimbaled. If you're a good shot, yeah, go with uh, go with fixed. Now, I don't want two of these, so I'm going to sell this module. And then we're going to go back in, and I'm going to look for a multi-cannon. Now, we can only mount class one on this thing. This is a fixed. This is a gimbal. If you look over on the right, right here, damage per second, the fixed is going to do 8.6. The gimbal is going to do 6.8. It's a trade-off. Get more shots on target if you're not that great a shot with the gimbal. I'm going to buy it and equip it. Utility mounts. We only have two here, so we're going to have to choose carefully. So there's chaff launchers, heat sink launchers, wake scanners, manifest scanners, kill warrant scanners. I like kill warrant scanners. We can put one on. What it does is it'll scan and communicate with multiple law enforcement networks to confirm outstanding bounties. You don't need a hyper expensive one of these. So we can just put that on there. This is all optional. You can go hunting without this. Now, putting a shield booster on a side e is a little silly and a little expensive. I probably wouldn't do it. If you're running anything higher, you're going to want to look at it, but you're really going to be messing with your total power draw at this point, too. And things like an actual shield generator are, you know, more important. So let's check our core internals here. All right, so we've got our lightweight ally, alloy. We've got a class 2e power plant. And we could get better ones, but I'm going to try to keep this bare bones. Basically, the better the power plant, the better your power capacity and heat efficiency are going to be. Thrusters. All right, here's where you may want to splurge a little bit. Having crappy thrusters sucks and feels really bad in combat. So you could go for 152,000 credit thrusters, but... Let's just say I'm poor. Let's slap some D-classes on here. It's still going to help. Frame shift drive. I don't plan to travel far on a sidewinder. I'm not going to mess with this. Life support. Some people say to have good life support. Some say it doesn't matter that much. Uh, this is a personal one for you guys. Power distributor. This is insanely important. You want to get a good power distributor because it is going to increase your weapons capacity, recharge, engines, systems all that this is what makes your ship run you want to continue to be able to fire you don't want to run out have the target put their shields back up and then well you're just kind of screwed sensors i'm not worrying with fuel tank i'm not worrying with optionals all right well planetary vehicle hanger so you could have an srv if you want uh, there's a cargo rack i don't really want that i would rather <laughs> Look at shield generators. So shield generator is fairly important. They're also pretty expensive and it's really easy to overrun your power budget with one of these. As you can see down there at the bottom, even going to a class D runs me over. So I'm going to go with, mm, on a side E, probably a regular one. As you can see, the bi weave sacrifices overall shield strength for a faster recharge rate. On a ship that can survive some punishment without shields, that's a pretty good idea. On a side E, which if your shields go down, you're basically dead. Personally, I'm not going to bother with it. And I know I have some friends that may disagree, but you know, this is my personal opinion. There's nothing really else that I see the need to put on here except maybe a shield cell bank to help you recharge your shields. But... I don't have the power capacity for it on this build, so we're not going to worry about it. No vehicle bays. Let's just check. The only other thing that may, you may want to put on one of these ships is maybe a hull reinforcement. I don't think it's really that big of a deal for a Sidewinder, but hell, it'll give us a little bit more survivability. And then, if you want to actually be able to get anywhere in the world of Elite, a fuel scoop. Pretty cheap one will do. And bam. We now have a <laughs> combat sighty. So let's get into space. Set up some fire groups here. That 
that should be good. Oh, I haven't flown one of these in a while. This is going to be interesting. So as we get out here, I'm going to head to a conflict, or not a conflict zone, a resource extraction site that I happen to know is in this system where we set up shop, but how do you find places to go bounty hunting? Well, let's go to the galaxy map. So here we are on the galaxy map, and I can sort the map for various different things like states, so war, lockdown, civil unrest, civil war. If you go to a war or civil war system, you're going to find conflict zones, and you can pop in there, pick a side, and you can pick up some bounties. I prefer doing resource extraction sites because there's a fixed cap on the type of, or on the amount that you get out of conflict zones. So what I like to do is come in here and let's see, that's economy, there we go. I like to turn these all off and then I like to look for extraction and refinery. These are systems like the one I'm currently in where you're going to find gas giants that are going to have resource extraction sites around them. And they're classed into th different categories. There's a regular one, there's a high uh, security one, and there's a hazardous one. The hazardous one, system security will never come to that one. So you probably don't want to go in there in a low-end ship. However, there is a high in this system that we're going to go visit. And through the magic of editing, I'll see you guys when we get there. All right, so here we are in a resource extraction zone. So I'm going to deploy my weapons, switch over to combat mode, pull up kill warrant scanner, and let's talk about the philosophy of bounty hunting in here now that we've got the kit and the where do you go sorted out. So you want to know what types of ships are supposed to be in one of these zones. These are for mining for players and NPCs. There are certain types of ships that I expect to see mining. An aft scout... Yeah, I've seen people mining in those. This guy is not one of them. If you see full-up combat ships in here, like Mambas, Fertilances, Vipers, they're probably not mining. Also, when somebody scans you, if you see something up in the top left up there, like I hope you have something good in your hold, go to your right-hand menu, go to Contacts, find that person's name, because they're probably wanted. You see we have a Cobra. There's a Viper. There's the Internal Security Service. An Adder. Let's check this guy. He's probably mining. They know what type of ship belongs here. But always make sure you full scan them first. Because if you open fire on a ship that's uh, not wanted, you're going to be wanted. And that's going to be a bad time for you. Where is that guy? He's gone off my radar. But what I like to do, because I'm lazy, is find the internal security services, who apparently have just left, <laughs> and follow them around. Ah, here's a Type 7 transport. Guarantee you this guy is mining. Fuzzy Dunlop, what are you doing, Fuzzy? You're mining, and you're clean. Here's a scout. This guy's also clean. There's a security service. So what you can do is cruise with them. We've got weapons fire out here for a while. You can cruise with a security service or you can keep an eye out for um, weapons fire like this. Just head towards it. Now here's where the philosophy divides just a little bit. You want to make sure you survive to collect your money. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what these guys are shooting at. Which is this dude right here who's dead. But they're probably also about to light this guy up. Oh, no, you're on something up here. What do we got? Ah, we've got another Asp Scout. So now that I've got him scanned, just go ahead and open fire to make sure that you get some 
hits him, because as you can see, they're wrecking him. Here we go. Target's dead. And we just got paid 252,000 credits for three seconds of work. This is how you can make money to save up for those big ships you want. Wait until the Fed Security Service has almost killed your target. And then get some hits in. This guy's not going to turn around and shoot at me. He's got much bigger threats. 70k. So, the long and short of it, guys, is get in the zone, find the feds, the internal security service, cruise around in their wake, let them do all the work for you, get in a couple pot shots to finish it off, you get paid, you don't get killed, and you get to turn your bounty vouchers in. And that's very important. Over here, under transactions, where we have these uh, bounties, if you die before you hand them in at a station, you lose them. Do not forget to turn in your bounty vouchers. That is probably one of the most important parts of bounty hunting. But yeah, it can be done in an anaconda. It can be done in a cobra. You can do it in a diamondback scout if you're a madman. It's not about the ship. It's about how you execute. So if you guys have any comments or questions, put them in the comments below. I know you guys aren't subscribed because I can see the analytics. Smash the subscribe button. My name is Vin Dimebot, and I will see you guys next time.